On today's episode of the Daedric Podcast, uh, we will be doing our beginner's guide to the Elder Scrolls, the beginning of your journey. Um... Yeah, from Morrowind, Oblivion, all the way through Skyrim, we are going to do exactly the opposite of what I just said. Yes. We are going from <laughs> Skyrim, then Oblivion, then Morrowind. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, let yeah. me start the recording. Uh, hold on. Now, I'll tell you something. Like Yay! That. So we, like we said, we will discuss the. Uh, we will actually focus on the creating of a character in all three of these games. Um, uh, we will be des- describing the various aspects that you will need to pay attention to as you start the game, the differences in choices and uh, you can make in the beginning, and finally, where you can go after the beginning slash tutorial. Do keep in mind though that these are just suggestions. Uh, for players who have little to no experience with these games uh, or are switching between these games. Um, So, you know, in the end, you're free to do whatever you want. This is an open RPG, so you can really do what you want. Uh, So feel free to ignore our advice uh, and instead focus on, you know, some of the basic information that we give you. Uh, And if at the end of this question, uh, the end of the video, you have questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section or look on uh the websites that we will put down in the description of this video so tom take it away yeah uh as you can see we started in skyrim uh as you are bound in a card with three unknown men you are being brought to your justice and this is uh like objectively one of the more mo- most restricted beginnings uh, of all the Elder Scrolls games, where this sequ- sequence on the cards when uh, the guy is talking between each other, you are tied, you can only move your camera and it lasts a whopping 10 minutes. You get a nice insight for from their di- dialogue like to the world that you are in, like to the current uh, happenings. But you don't have really much to work here. So uh, let's use this uh, free time and talk about the skill system or the leveling up system in Skyrim. Um, It's really been dumbed down compared to the previous installments, but that doesn't mean that it is dumb. On the contrary, it's, it's streamlined, intuitive and modern. In Skyrim, your character de facto only has three stats. Health, Stamina and Magicka. And unlike the previous titles, uh, these are not reflected from other skills, uh, but are standalone. Uh, You start uh, with 100 in each, and every time you level up, you can raise one of your... uh, one one of those uh, of your choice by 10. Speaking of skills, you have 18 of those. Uh, These can be divided into three groups and named after the classic player archetypes, the mage, the thief, and the warrior. Under the mage, or the blue one, uh, you have schools of magic you can use. These are alteration, conjuration, uh, destruction, restoration, illusion, and enchanting. A warrior has one-handed, two-handed archery block, heavy armor, and smithing, and the thief has light armor, lockpicking, pickpocketing, sneak, speech, and archery. Uh, these bad boys go from 0 to 100 and start uh, start around uh, 15, 20, or 25, depending on your race. Uh, each level up uh, in a skill contributes to your character level up, and once you reach the cap, you will level up. Uh, you can increase one of the aforementioned stats, like the health, stamina, and magicka, uh, and you also gain one perk point. You can then dump these into your skills of choosing, unlocking some nifty abilities such as dual casting spells or becoming Thomas, uh, Thomas the Panzer Creek engine with your shield. Uh, the perks accessible to you will rely on your skill level uh, you have and unlocking prerequisite perks. You level up the skills by simply using them. Now, uh, as you are brought into the uh, Helgen village slash town, you are being unloaded from the guard, and as all of you are prisoners, you are being uh, not intervened. How do you? (laughs) 
Um, you basically uh, interrogated. Interrogated. Yeah. Interrogated. Yeah. Interrogated, <laughs> yeah, interrogated uh, by the uh, soldiers and the captain. Um, now, <laughs> as you can see, uh, here's Railov of Riverwood. Uh, not not Railov. What's what's his name? Uh, this the guy is, uh, that... the, the guys in front of you is Lokir and the uh, Lokir, the guy... Lokir yeah. of Rorikstad. Yeah, yeah. He he's the he's the living. No, I'm not a rebel. You can't do this, man. Yeah. Um. Proof that the empire yeah. does not uh, take well. Yeah. People who try to <laughs> run away. <laughs> <laughs> Instantly get shut down. Yeah. Uh. So in the beginning, you are prompted by Hadvar, the uh, imperial male, to uh, it's, uh, north, choose actually. your race, basically. <laughs> huh? He well, technically he is a he, Nord a race, north? but he yeah he's a Nord, but he's part of the Empire. He's from Skyrim, remember? Oh, I thought I always thought he's an imperial. Well, he's an imperial he's legion. A, <laughs> imperial. Yeah, anyway, uh, as with any other Elder Scrolls game, you get to choose from 10 races. Uh, these are Argonians, our scaly friends. Um, if you choose them, you get a major bonus to lockpicking. They also get resist disease, 50%. The ability to breathe underwater and uh, their racial uh, ability called Hist Skin, which allows them to regenerate high uh, HP uh, rapidly and... Uh, like all other abilities, uh, these can be only used once per day. Argonians are very versatile and can be used to whatever uh, to whatever playstyle you choose. Then you have Bretons. Uh, Bretons are the half elves of Elder Scrolls Universe. They get a major boost to conjuration. They also get an additional spell, Conjure Familiar, which allows them to summon a spectral dog or a wolf to help them. They uh, automatically resist uh, one quarter of all magic damage and they get an ability called Dragon Skin, which lets them absorb 50% of all magicka from hostile spells. They are good for a sort of anti-mage build. Then we have Dark Elves, uh, the Dunmer. Uh, they get boost to destruction, Additionally, ad ad additional spell Sparks, which uh, siphons magicka from enemies as well as health. Uh, they resist 50% of fire damage and they get the Ancestor Wrath uh, skill which surrounds them if in a fury of flames. They are uh, good for a sort of magic assassin build. Then we have High Elves uh, which get bonus to Illusion and, uh, and uh, an additional spell called Fury which uh, is a Illusion spell that infuriates uh, <laughs> the enemy and makes them attack their allies. They get a solid bonus to their begin uh, starting magicka of 50 and the skill called Highborn which allows them to regenerate magicka real fast. They are uh, the uh, generic mage focus build. Then we have Imperials. Uh, Imperials uh, get a major boost to restoration. They get the uh, skill Imperial Luck which is a passive skill that allows them to find more gold around the world and uh, their skill uh, voice of the emperor which calms nearby uh, nearby people for 60 seconds also as with all of them once per day uh, imperials are uh, another generic like uh, versatile build but they are usually good as a sword and shield type of guy uh, then we have uh, our furry friend Skajit uh, they are naturally pro uh, naturally uh, good in s at sneaking. Uh, they get claws as they are feline, uh, which function as a, as a natural weapon when you, it enhances your unarmed damage. And the skill Night Eye, which improves your night vision. And this uh, Night Eye can be used infinitely times per day. Uh, Khajiit are uh, thieves, rogues and assassins. Uh, Nords. Uh, Nords are the uh, bulky, uh, inhabit na na bulky inhabitants of Skyrim. Uh, they get a major boost to two-handed. Uh, they resist half of all frost damage and they get battle cry, which uh, scares all their foes uh, in a solid area and makes them flee. 
uh, they are the sort of barbarian uh, focus type character. Uh, then we have orcs. Uh, they get a major boost to heavy armor uh, and a s relatively niche ability called Bloodkin, which uh, gives them free passage to orc strongholds and the ability Berserker Rage. In uh, when they activate that, they take half damage and do double damage. And they are the classic of again uh, Berserker or like uh, barbarian tank focus type character. Red guards, uh, they get uh, a major boost to one-handed, they resist poison, and they get the uh, Adrenaline Rush uh, ability, which uh, regenerates their stamina real fast. They are, they are good for a sort of dual-wielding sword type character. Then, uh, last one, uh, we have Wood Elves, uh, which get major boost to uh, archery, they resist poison, resist disease, and they can command animals uh, once per day. Uh, these are your standard ranged assassin archer type guys. Now, uh, all of these races, uh, as I, when I uh, described them to you, I gave them I, uh, like these recommended uh, playstyles, but that this doesn't mean like anything. If you want to be a high elf nightingale or a high elf barbarian, you can go for it. If you want to be an orc, uh, an orc mage, go for it. If you want to be an uh, Argonian fucking druid, you, like you can. I don't know how you would do that, but it's the the world is your oyster. And uh, Elder Scrolls games have always been about uh, customizing your character. And their initial bonuses mean essentially nothing, especially to the skills. It's, it's a nice head start if you want to level up the skill uh, to uh, its maximum potential. But the abilities are the thing that governs your character. And... Even so, not that much. It's what you do with what you are given that uh, const that, that builds your character in the uh, in, in Skyrim. Very now, true. as Very you can true. see, uh, decapitation in uh, live TV. Uh, <laughs> um, don't be afraid. Uh, you are next. <laughs> don't be afraid you're... you're next of course that'll that'll reassure everyone <laughs> yes so uh as you are being brought to the uh chopping block uh you are going to hear strange rumbles and st strange cries from the distance uh which is a nice uh place to talk about deus ex machina which uh appears in the Oscars games quite often especially in the beginning you, unlike, unlike all the previous Elder Scrolls games, where you have basically been sent by Uriel Septim the Seventh wow. somewhere. <laughs> we'll get to those uh, in a bit, but yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. Here you are just a prisoner, just a nobody. And as you can see, your execution has been just interrupted by a massive, thorny black dragon, which starts raining hell from the skies. Uh... Like and, dragons uh, do. As you can see, I, I, yeah, I, I chose an ord uh, mainly because it's the default option. Um, now, uh, your hands are still tied up even after the execution gets interrupted. And uh, you need to carefully get to safety. Uh, you are immediately prompted by the blonde hunk Raylov to get to the stone, uh, stone tower just across uh, where you meet Ulfric Stormcloak uh, finally ungagged no more kinky stuff, uh, whom you first met uh, on the carriage in, into Helgen. Uh, you then make your way outside uh, of the stone tower when sudden, like you make your way up the stone tower and suddenly uh, one of the sides gets blown away and the massive black dragons are screaming fire inside. You are then prompted by uh, Raylov to jump onto the inn below that's currently being absolutely destroyed by fire and debris 
you then make uh, your way down into the courtyard where you meet Hadvar, the man that uh, initially uh, took you to Helgen and then uh, talked to you about what race you would like to be, little man. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you're currently Hadvar is. Uh, I'm not sure how far behind you are, but like uh, you're currently chasing Hadvar. Yeah, I'm currently chasing Hadvar. You, you, you basically have to follow just him. follow him. <laughs> this is this is this is a very streamlined, like not like streamlined. It's it's a very corridor, corridor. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's a railroad. Like, that's the term, I think. Yeah, it's it's extremely rail uh, railroaded. Like this is true with all of the Skyrim dungeons. Through people. Wow. Well, yeah. The, well, yeah. They're they're Basically. extremely narrow. But it's yeah. it's hard to get lost. <laughs> so once you get to the courtyard, you uh, find a lot of imperial soldiers and battle mages just trying to snipe the dragon down to no avail. And Hardware finally uh, takes you near the fort uh, when you are met with Railoff again, your uh, nice b blue, blue-eyed, blonde companion. And <laughs> the <f> <laughs> they swear uh, each other. Spa if, if, you, you have to cho you have to choose between these. And Railov's path uh, will give you access to heavy armor from the get-go, whereas Hadvar path uh, will give you access to two-handed weapons and later on will uh, give you some free smithing materials. But as a true Nord, I went with Mr. Goldilocks. <laughs> That's one way to interpret it. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm going... I'm, I'm, I'm the true Nord, you know, I have to... I have to roleplay a bit. <laughs> So anyway, uh, as you enter the hall, you and Railov immediately spot a bested Stormcloak laying near a table. After recollecting your thoughts, Railov unbinds you and suggests you take his brother-in-arms equipment, which consists of a Stormcloak tunic, uh, a fur, fur boots, fur, far? Fur, fur boots, fur, yeah, boots. Fur, boots. <laughs> fur, fur, fur boots and an iron axe. Uh, a thing to note here is that unlike other games, here you ha have access to magic straight away. Uh, well, you do have theory, that in the other ones, but... <laughs> technically not in Morrowind. <laughs> uh, so anyway, yeah. in theory, you do not need to use melee at all. Uh, from the get-go, you get flames, which allows you to spray a stream of fire from your hands. And healing, which, well, heals you. Uh, from here, you must wait for Railov to open the metal gate. But wait, oh no, it's locked. So you turn around and try the wooden fence barricade thingy. Uh, and uh, just in time, because an Imperial captain and her fellow soldiers who seek refuge in the keep also just run into you. Uh, you try to ambush them, but to no avail. And they are uh, immediately hostile, so you uh, have to dispose of them. As this is your first encounter, try out the melee, the magic, see what you like. And if you somehow get your salad tossed, don't worry, a rail off will break their spines in a matter of seconds anyway. Uh, once bested, you can loot these foes. Uh, on the captain, you'll find a s full heavy armor set an imperial sword and a key from the metal gate. Uh, the soldier will have the light armor and a sword too. From there, uh, you can go deeper into the fort or go exploring a bit and search around the area where you would have ended if you went with Hadvar instead of uh, Thor McNordixon. Uh, after heading deeper into the keep, you almost get your uh, entire body crushed by a collapsed ceiling. Uh, a thing to note here is uh, Dungeons in Skyrim are extremely linear and it's really hard to get lost, even uh, especially if you open your map and switch to local, you'll see that the majority of the dungeons look like a snake. And uh, there are of course exceptions to this, namely the uh, Dwarven Ruins. Uh, so, um, as you can see, uh, even though he's a man of great stature and a glorious flowing locks, he's still an NPC and as such Railov is slow. So just run in front of him. He's going to like burden you. He's really slow. 
Uh, so once you enter the kitchen, you'll have to fight a few more Imperials. Feel free to loot them. Uh, grab the available potions and get some ingredients hanging from the ceiling. Uh, then continue through the room uh, to arrive uh, behind the rubble and down the stairs to the torture room. Heal your encounter. Uh, the the torture and some of his lackeys uh, in a fight with uh, a group of stormcloaks. Uh, don't forget to loot the torture. Uh, he has a steel dagger on him and a torture's hood, uh, which uh, can only be obtained in the special edition of the game. Uh, behind the battle counter, uh, one can find several lockpicks, iron an iron shield, iron mace, and a book of brief history of the empire. If you are into reading. Uh, next uh, to one of the pillars, uh, one can find a table with a book, the Book of the Dragonborn, which is a major, f ma what, what you call it, foreshadowing. Yeah, it's basically, uh, it's major foreshadowing, though if, if you've seen the trailer, it's kind of, you know. <laughs> yeah, if, I mean, if you've seen the trailer. But still, there, there, are, there are aspects of the book that talk about the journey of the dragonborn and it's like yeah it's it, it's foreshadowing anyway uh there's the book there's an iron dagger and a knapsack with four lockpicks uh, and some healing potions with all these lockpicks uh you can open the cell where the dead mage is uh he carries some uh, some gold some magicka potions a novice hood and a novice robes uh this apparel boosts your spellcasting abilities and next to him uh, is again some gold and a spell tome of sparks. Sparks is the spell that you get as a Dunmer, but also you get it here if you didn't pick it up before. It allows you to uh, drain. Uh, it, it's like the f the electric variant of the flames spell, uh, sacrificing a little bit of damage to the health, but to siphon the magicka. It's it's used uh to deal with mages and even as a non-mage character these items will be useful to you uh you could either sell them or disenchant them now moving on you'll go through a corridor full of cages which do actually contain some gold and bone meal if you feel like practicing your rock picking skill uh, the bone meal is an alchemical ingredient that can be picked up from almost every skeleton that you come across in, uh, in Skyrim and will make a nice start to your ingredients collection. Uh, if you want to be an alchemist or just want to spice things up with a little bit of bonus here and there or poison, you know? Break some Geneva Convention, who cares? Um, now, uh, you then arrive in a cavern where you are greeted by several Imperials, mow them down with your newly acquired gear and move on to the archers. The archers are standing near, uh, near or even on top of the oil that you can see, uh, you, which you, you can just light. You burned down your ally with? Yeah, I just burned my, my guy because I needed a two-handed weapon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Anyway, uh, you can light the fire. Uh, you can light the oil with uh, any fire spell. Uh, get your hands on some bow and arrows and try out the marksman style of life. But don't get carried away. Stealth archers are fun, fun play style. But come on, it's overused. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's yeah. We'll get to that later. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> if by any chance uh, a fellow Stormcloaks get, gets owned, be sure to pick up uh, their weapon as they usually sport the two-handed variant. Uh, pull the lever to, to lower the bridge and follow the water uh, to the left. Uh, here you'll enter a treat for all you arachnophobes. Uh, if you don't like normal real life big spiders, uh, you are going to love frostbite spiders. Just your casual run of the mill sheep sized spiders. Uh, don't worry, the, uh, though they are quite squishy. Also, loot them for their poison, which you can apply to any weapons and or ammunition. Uh, now, as you go deeper into the cave, uh, you stumble upon a wooden cart, uh, which is full of wine and, uh, and a single money bag, which has a solid sum of 45 gold. In. And more, impo more importantly, next to the cart is the amazing, the iconic, as seen in TV, memes to oblivion and back, the iron helmet. Uh, it's the iconic Skyrim horned helmet you uh, all know, but what 
Whoa, don't go stumbling around. Well, it's snoring. Oh my god, is that the fucking sleeping bear? Yes, it is. Now it's your chance to try the stealthy approach. Slice him, dice him, or try the old snipe with uh, bow and arrow and enjoy the kill cam. Which is happening right now. Enjoy yes, the kill perfectly, cam. Per perfectly timed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, the, role, uh, the, the rule of Skyrim number one, if you kill it, loot it. So don't forget to get your hands on that bear pelt and bear claws. Bear claws are a particularly rare uh, alchemical ingredient. Uh, now, Even despite all the bears, they are still quite. <laughs> I mean, yeah, despite, they, I mean, yeah. There's a lot of bears, but at the same time, uh, you that, don't necessarily collect bears. them. Yes, there's a lot of bears yeah, considering yeah. what you want to do with alchemy. <laughs> So th this was your final uh, combat. After the loading screen, you are hit one with one of the most memorable moments in Skyrim. The scenery is just jaw-dropping. And uh, holy shit, is there a dragon flying above you? Yes. Um, now, from here, uh, you basically exit the combat, uh, st uh, the combat portion of the tutorial. And you are uh, here on a nice walk with a rail of or hardware. Uh, you just have to follow the road from the cave uh, down to the crossing when you meet an actual road, then go to the river and follow to River Root, the home of uh, Railov and Hadvar, where you meet with their family and they uh, send you on your way. Now, on the way to River Root, there are some uh, notable locations. Uh, just before you meet the actual crossing of the stone road, uh, if you head left, once you reach the big rocks, you will stumble upon a bandit camp, which has a skill book, which levels up your uh, one-handed, uh, some bandits that you can loot, and also a treasure map, which leads you to a treasure chest. If you can actually find it, I have yet, I have over a thousand hours, I, I just, yeah, and I just died in the recording from yeah, fall damage, yeah. I forgot it's there. Uh, <laughs> wow. Also, that, that yeah. map is actually, it's actually perfectly placed, that uh, bandit camp, because the actual location of the treasure is next to Riverwood, so. <laughs> yeah, 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 it actually is. It, it's uh, across the, uh, across the river. Yeah. Just just before you uh, see the wind, just, if you actually like stand on the little island where the windmill is on, in Riverwood, at the south uh, portion of the island, and just head uh, west, you'll find eventually it's near a fallen tree. Yeah, it's in the trunk of the fallen tree. Yeah, it's in the trunk. Uh, it's a it's a nice treasure chest. It gives you it gives you a nice uh, head start. Yeah. But anyway, uh, on the head down to the riverbank. <gasps> Uh, you uh, f stumble upon the Guardian Stones. If you actually follow Railov or Hardware this whole time, he will actually point you out to uh, points of locations of interest uh, yeah, around, yeah, exactly. around the area. Uh, so once you go to these Guardian Stones, um, in the previous games, you had to choose your birth sign before, like, uh, which was a set thing. In Skyrim, birth signs are not really a thing, and you have to use these uh, sign stones. Guardian, sto uh, stone. Guardian, Guardian stones. Guardian yeah. stones, uh, Which determine your. Uh, well, they don't really bonus. determine things, they give you certain boosts, and. Uh... Yeah, they give you boosts, but some of them are like major, like uh, this. I, w I would say the Guardian stones are one of the most major ones, which uh, basically make your set skill group like the mage the thief and the warrior level up faster mm -hmm. by a solid 20 percent which is like a lot mm -hmm. uh, and there are some of other ones like the steed which allows you to carry more stuff the tower which allows you to lockpick automatically lockpick uh, heavy locks then there's like the ritual which is one of the most busted ones which allows you to uh area of effect resurrect the dead yeah, as in, uh, uh, unlike, uh, you know, the spells that you can use where you can only summon, uh, like, uh, resurrect one enemy, maybe two if you got the perk for it, uh, this spell uh, resurrects all uh, va available, available targets in the vicinity. 
which yeah, is pretty it, open. It, it doesn't render and it doesn't render them unresurrectable. Yeah, no, you can just like keep re uh, regen like keep yeah, using so the you, ability. You you gather up a huge army of corpses. Yeah, if you <laughs> if you if you do your uh, do everything correctly, uh, you could technically go around with an army of undead. Though yeah. that is not exactly easy. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, anyway, once you start following the uh, stone road uh, near the river, uh, you can head. Act once you encounter the wolves, which you will encounter, if you go right uh, on the little uh, dirt path, you will go into the Ember Shard Mine, which is uh, one of the first dungeons you'll actually go to. It's inhabited by uh, some bandits. And it's a nice source of some early game uh, weaponry. The, uh, I namely remember that I always came up with steel weapons when I got out of there. And a hefty chunk of gold. <laughs> now, yeah, yeah I'm murdering chickens. Yeah, you're making murdering chickens. So, and once you get to Riverwood, you uh, just go with Railoff or Hadvar, talk to their family... Uh, they will give you some uh, nice, what you call them? Uh, some gear, some, some, yeah, some stuff, some yeah, healing potions, some supplies. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you you uh, can go talk to all of the town. There are several quests in there. You can talk to Sven and Feindl, uh, which have uh, there's a little bit of a romantic side quest. <laughs> you just uh, you can talk. <laughs> yeah, I got myself killed. Also, uh, you can talk to the Riverwood Trader, which starts your first major quest, uh, yeah, which is the Golden Claw, which uh, brings you to the uh, Bleak Falls Barrow. That's what, again, one of the more uh, mem memorable locations. Yeah, true, especially in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, once you gather up your strength, you can uh, head just head north to White Run, and from there the world is your oyster. Do as you will. Yes, well, I mean, even before that, you could do whatever you want. <laughs> Absolutely, but this is a nice. This is that the things I mentioned are a nice start. The Bleak Falls Barrow, especially because you get a nice enchanted weapon. Very true. Very true. All right, so that was that's Skyrim. Skyrim. That's Skyrim for you. Now let's move on to Oblivion. Let me uh, turn it up. Um, yep, here we go. So uh, I'll uh, I'll show you my recording of um, Oblivion, uh, and there are quite some differences. Wait, hold on. Before that, let me. Years ago, ruled I was born. Sorry. Let me put on the uh, intro uh, of the game. So you have something to enjoy. Because it's a nice intro. So, let's <laughs> let it play. I was born 87 years ago. For 65 years I've ruled as Tamriel's Emperor. But for all these years, I've never been the ruler of my own dreams. I have seen the gates of oblivion beyond which no waking eye may see. Behold, in darkness a doom sweeps the land. This is the 27th of last seed. The year of Akatosh, 433. These are the closing days of the Third Era and the final hours of my life.
wow, such a music, such a festival, like amazing, mm, dramatic. <laughs> dramatic. All right. So because of the way it begins, I'm going to start with the, the racial differences, which are slightly different. So Argonians uh, resist disease again, 75%. Uh, resist poison 100% still have water breathing <laughs> Breton I'm going through this really fast Breton have more magicka they start with resist magic also have the dragon skin power which is just a uh, shield for 50% the dark elves have fire resistance 75% uh, and the ancestor guardian power which allows them to summon their guardian uh, spirit uh, the high elves have fortify magic 100 uh, resist disease 75% and an elemental weakness of 25% Imperials have uh, Star of the West power, which absorbs fatigue, untouch, and Voice of the Emperor, which charms a target for uh, one for 60 sec 30 seconds, I think. Yeah. Then uh, we have uh, wow, that's taking long. Okay, Khajiit, <laughs> Khajiit uh, have the Eye of Fear power, which demoralizes uh, targets, uh, and the Eye of Night, which gives them a Night Eye, which they can use as many times as they want. The Night Eye, at least. The other ones once per day. Uh, next up we have the Nords, which have Frost Immunity for 100%, uh, and they have the Nordic Frost Ability, which allows them to do 50 damage uh, with Touch, and finally the Woad, which allows the ability which allows them to use Shield for 30%. Um, next up we have the... Um, yeah, come on. <laughs> Can't make the recording of... Uh, orcs, there we go. The Orcs, which have 25% uh, Resist Magic, actually. And for one, once per day, uh, for 60 seconds, they can use the Berserk ability, which allows them to fortify their fatigue for 200 points, their health for 20 points, strength 50 points, but it drains the agility for 100 points. So you're not going to go very fast. Next is the Red Guards, which have Resist Disease and Poison, both 75%. Uh, the Adrenaline Rush power, for once per day, they can fortify agility, endurance, speed, strength, and health. Uh, all by 50 points except for health, uh, which is 25 points. And finally, we have the Wood Elves, which have resi resist disease 75%, the Beast Tongue power, which allows them to command uh, creatures uh, for 60 seconds, but only very low level. Uh, so these are the main racial differences. Um, and when it comes to the skills and base uh, attributes, however, there is a separation between the genders uh, of each race as well. So naming all of those would take a bit too long um, gender inequality yeah that's true <laughs> um, <laughs> i mean <laughs> so if you want to see those specifics uh we should just go to the uh, website uh, that is in uh, uh well in the description uh, of the youtube video anyway so just a thing to note here yeah. uh the uh guy in the intro that you that you all heard uh, is Patrick Stewart, Sir Patrick Stewart, yes. and when he got the role, they actually gave him a three hundred page biography of Uriel Septim the Seventh to read, so he could prepare for the role. Nice, nice. I didn't know the the, the biography, but it actually do, does fit because well, Patrick Stewart is a, an amazing uh, actor. Uh, so him being to be able to fully go into the character, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he said that. Uh, for uh, this small of a role, this is the like compared even to movies and other stuff he did. This is one of the most uh, thorough like uh, character preparation he he got, and he he was so thankful for it. <laughs> nice. All right. So um, I'm not gonna go too much into the details of what is going, what's happening on screen. Uh, I mean, it's it's it, like we have a subtitle, so it's <laughs> it's pretty clear. Um, but uh, what I will explain is that unlike Skyrim, uh, the older games have uh, separate attribute, attributes uh, that uh, affect the skills. So the different attributes have different effects, some of which even have an effect per level. So you have strength, which affects your total encumbrance, your total fatigue, which is the replacement for stamina, uh, and the damage you do with melee attacks. Intelligence uh, affects the total amount of magicka you have. Willpower uh, affects the rate at which re uh, magicka regenerates, as well as your total fatigue. Agility uh, affects your total fatigue and the damage dealt with ranged weapons and your steadiness in combat, which basically means that uh, uh, if you get hit by a weapon, you don't immediately stagger. Um, 
speed, uh, which affects how fast you move and how far you can jump. Uh, endurance, which uh, affects your total fatigue as well as your starting health and the health you gain every time you level up, uh, which we will get back to later. Then personality, it affects your ability to gain information and better prices for NPCs. And finally, luck, which affects everything you do in a very small way. Now, each attribute, uh, attribute covers three skills, uh, with the exception of luck. By the end of the tutorial, you will have to choose uh, one of the pre-existing classes or create your own, which is also different uh, from Skyrim. Because uh, uh, your class indicates your specialization, your favorite attributes, and your major skills. And in order to level up your character, you will actually need to increase uh, your skill levels of your major skills by a, a, a sum of uh, 10. And every time you gain a skill level uh, of any kind, not just the major skills, also the uh, so-called minor skills, uh, the an invisible counter adds one uh, to uh, the governing attribute um, up to a maximum of 10. And every time you level up, you can increase three attributes based on the amount of this uh, invisible counter. So basically, uh, in total, you can increase an attribute by plus five uh, per level uh, if you get the counter up to 10. Uh, so for instance, uh, um, if you spe like if you level up your uh, one-handed blade, uh, for instance, or technically blade in this game, uh, by ten points, then you can uh, increase your strength by five points uh, when you level up. So uh, the maximum is five, the minimum is one, and you know, it, it's yeah, <laughs> depending on how much you level it up, uh, the, the skills uh, the, are related to it. Uh, the minimum is. One, no, yes. yeah, it's one. If you, if you do put no, uh, the, the number doesn't display, but it's if, if you select it, it would go by one. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Uh, the complicated part uh, of this is is that if you want to max uh, your attributes out early, you will need to actually keep track of your own skill increase. This is even more difficult considering the fact that uh, once you raise ten levels in your major skills, you will be eligible to level up. But it also, automatic, also automatically resets the counter to zero. Uh, you won't actually level up until you sleep somewhere, but the counter for both the major skills and the attribute increase will continue to count up. So basically, if your major skill is blade, and you increase that by 10, you will be able to level up and gain plus 5 in strength, but only plus 1 in two other attributes that you have to choose. So let's say you don't level up. But you continue to increase your blade skill with plus five, uh, and then increase your sneak, a non-major skill, by uh, by ten points, and then proceed to increase your block, another major skill, by plus five in that order. What happens is that the f when you go to bed for the first time, you will increase uh, your character level by one and get plus five on strength and plus one or two other things. If you then immediately go to sleep again. Uh, you can go up another level, but this time you can uh, only increase your strength by plus three because you only increased it by five. Uh, uh, and then you, you increased your blade by five. And then you can increase your agility by five and your endurance by three. Uh, this is all very complicated, and even with this explanation, it might be hard to understand. So I would advise you to. Who doesn't love math in their in their RPG? Or yeah, math? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I would suggest uh, learn how to figure like try it out yourself, and then uh, if you're really picky about what you want to increase and how much uh, by how much, like me, then you have to keep track of it, uh, and you will actually need to do some planning. But this is also. Uh, it might actually be a better idea to just uh, enjoy the roleplay instead of worrying about yeah, maxing absolutely. out every attribute just, as just, clearly just as possible. Just go with it. Yeah. I mean... Just go with it, level up whatever like suits, you, suits your boat, use whatever you like. Exactly. But as long as you don't turn up the difficulty all the way to the max, <laughs> True. your skill levels doesn't matter that much. You can always power level some things if you want to use a certain spell. Yeah, like the worst... Okay, the so the, limitations. The, the worst uh, case scenario is that you max out all the skill levels that are major skills. Because if you've maxed out all your major skills, you can no longer level up. Because to level up, you need to uh, 
you need to have uh, 10 uh, major skills that go up. So uh, if you can no longer level up because you can't go beyond the 100 uh, on those major skills, then well, guess what? You can't <laughs> you can't level up anymore. And that means that you also can't increase your attributes anymore. And that's why it is somewhat of a good idea to have at least one or two major skills that you're not going to use all that much. Uh, or not automatically forced to level up. Because, well, we'll get to classes later. But, uh, yeah, I think it's a good idea to, um, to increase your endurance early on. Simply because uh, once you have, like, every time you level up, like I said before, uh, you gain health based on the amount of uh, endurance that you have. So if your endurance is very high very early on, then every time you level up, it goes up by a lot. Which is, of course, what you want to do. Um, but uh, another one is, uh, is speed, because you know it's easy to get around at high speed. But also because speed is something that will constantly go up otherwise. Uh, because, um, I haven't mentioned that, some of the skills that you have are a bit different. So... In Skyrim, you actually have less skills than you have in Oblivion, and especially Morrowind. Morrowind is even more. We'll get to that later. But So you don't have the smithing uh, skill anymore. Instead, it's the armorer, which you need uh, the hammer for that I just picked up, the repair hammer. And you like it's uh, based on the name repair hammer, you can repair your weapons and gear, but you can't really you know, make weapons. You can only repair them. Then there's the athletics um skill which uh, is basically the the uh, the some features you get from walking around and that's why also it increases when you walk around uh, there's block standard heavy armor standard uh, weapons is kind of interesting in uh, Skyrim you have it separated into one-handed and two-handed weapons whereas in oblivion it's separated into blunt and blade weapons and you have the hand-to-hand -hand, uh, combat um, then you have, uh, instead of archery, it's called uh, marksmanship. Uh, light armor is the same. Acrobatics is uh, your jumping capabilities. Um, and I will continue the list uh, after this, because right now we're going to talk about the uh, birth signs, which uh, in Skyrim you don't have, but here you can see you have them. Uh, so the apprentice gives you more magicka, but a weakness to magic. Atronach gives you more magicka, spell absorption, but you can no longer have any regeneration. Uh, Lady uh, will give you more willpower and endurance. The Lord will give you the ability to uh, restore your own health, but you also get a weakness to fire. Uh, the Lover gives you the Lover's Kiss ability, which is basically paralyzed on touch, but you also damage your own fatigue. Uh, the Mage will give you a flat bonus on magicka, uh, nothing else. Ritual give you the Bless Words uh, uh, ability, which turns uh, Undead away from you, and Mara's Gift, which also uh, allows you to heal. The Serpent spell, uh, the Serpent will give you the Serpent spell, which allows you to damage Untouch uh, and cure your own poison. Uh, cure poison, poison that you're being affected by, as well as dispel any other effects that are happening on you, but it also damages your fatigue. The Shadow will give you Invisibility. Uh, for 60 seconds. Uh, the Steed will give you a huge boost in speed. The Thief will give you a boost in agility, luck and speed. Uh, the Tower uh, birth sign will give you the Tower Key ability which allows you to open an average lock uh, once a day and also give you the Tower Warden which allows you to reflect damage uh, for, by 5%. And finally the Warrior will give you plus 10 endurance and strength. Take the tower. Lockpicking in Oblivion is cancer. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Go for. You could go for the uh, thief one to get plus ten in luck because, as you, as you previously mentioned, in order to increase your attributes by a big uh, amount, you need to upgrade the skills related to that uh, uh, that uh, uh, that attribute. And luck has no uh, related uh, attributes. So that's why yeah, luck will so you always would have go to up sacrifice plus one. 10 levels. Yes. Basically, uh, yeah. The uh, luck will always go up plus one. So, uh, yeah, that's why I think the minimum 
yeah so if you give a boost on yourself uh, then uh, you get a head start and that you don't have to waste 10 levels like you said another option is endurance because uh, the, the the warrior because it gives you extra endurance or you could go for the steed and you get like way faster uh, early on which is nice so they don't go so slow although as you can see uh, I'm already having difficulty with uh, the NPCs not being very fast um, yeah, I mean, you, one could say that, like, okay, so this birth sign is something that you start with, and that's an ability you will always have, you can't change it. However, uh, you there's also these so-called doom stones, which are also, uh, some of them at least, are also based on the birth signs, and they also give you an ability, but you can change that ability. It's not yeah, as great. You can go around the map, change yeah. that, and also there is, in the uh, Mages Guild, there is an Ori, Ore? Well, if you have that DLC, an orrery. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 which gives you a similar power. Yes, exactly. Um, yeah. What else is there to say? Um, these are these are basically the main uh, things you need. Oh right, I was gonna finish the uh, skills. Um, so you have acrobats, which is for jumping. Sneak uh, is the same. Secure like lockpicking is back to uh, is called security. Speech is speech craft, and uh, it's actually split it up into speech craft and uh, mer mercantile, which is uh, speech craft is more for persuading people, and mer mercantile is more um, you know when you're buying stuff. How much money do you get? I love how nobody knows how to fucking pronounce that. Yeah. Mercantile. 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 There's no H though. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um uh, well and also another thing that I did here was pick up all these swords along the way, which gives Boris like a little extra dialogue. But here we are moving on to the choosing of a class. Um and the class gives you some interesting uh Thing so it like I said before it um it gives you the 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 uh the specialization the favorite attributes and a major skill the specialization means that you get plus five on all the skills related to that favorite attributes get means that you get uh, a bonus on those specific attributes as well uh which means that you can also choose luck and major skills like we said are the ones that you need to increase in order to level up. Now I'm showcasing all of the uh, classes that you can choose from uh, beforehand. Uh, like the game, like these are like you know some classes that you can choose to role play as. But there's also the custom class ability, which is what I chose. Uh, what you can do, however, is select one and then custom class because then the custom class will get that uh, uh, get that picture, which is nice. Uh, as you can see here, I, I chose speed and endurance because, uh, and I choose these specific major skills because I know that I'm not going to use them uh, all the time. That way I can't accidentally level up because I am very much a planner. <laughs> so I will, I choose my, uh, my major skills very carefully because I know that I can't accidentally raise these. Uh, yeah, there we go. See, with the picture. <laughs> Because you actually will be able to see that picture later on in your menu, so if choosing the nice picture is nice. <laughs> but and, uh, there are more pictures than that, like the monk, uh, the nightingale, all of those. To have yeah, you can choose picture. which. Yeah, exactly. But the one that but you, you select it right from three pictures. No, no, you can choose all the pictures. No, no, uh, that was just oh, really? uh, the combat stealth or the other thing. It's which oh. uh, class you select before you cr press uh, create custom class. Hmm. I see. Yes. <laughs> All right. Now that uh, we've done that, uh, sorry everyone for ignoring you in chat. Uh, we do see you. It's uh, sorry. We were doing the whole uh, explanation thing. So hi, Jarls. Hi, Plague. Hi, my little oh. lolly Duda. <laughs> that's me. That, oh, that's, that's you. Me. <laughs> that's your, what a name. Oh, am I not a moderator? And yeah, that's a horrible name. That's 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 why I'm named like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, and we are doing good as well. So yeah, what else do you want? To, like uh, after this, I will go into uh, what I think is a good starting uh, dungeon. 
because you get some good weapons, and that's about all I do. I mean, it's but, it, it's not like we think it's a good starting dungeon. When you exit the fucking uh, cellars, it's right in front of yeah, you. Yeah, that's true. It's like, <laughs> it's hey, hey, you should like... go here. <laughs> <laughs> there might as well be a giant fucking arrow. Yeah. Oh, that reminds me. Um... So in uh, in uh, Skyrim, all of like both your 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 health, your magicka, and your stamina all regenerates automatically. But in uh, Oblivion, your health does not regenerate automatically. You can uh, only do that with spells or potions. Be careful with that. Uh, yeah, here but we uh, see the runes. <laughs> like yeah. uh, compared to Skyrim, you get a lot of a lot more. Skill, uh, spells in Oblivion. Even if you're not a mage, like from quests and books that you find around, you get a lot of a lot of books that teach you spells. And these spells are wildly different. It's not like a heal for more. It's, no, no. It's usually it's it's also that the spells you have like a lot variation. of different yeah variations of spells, combination spells, which is not very common. Yeah, in Skyrim. Uh, and of course, there's the fact that you can uh... make spells. Yeah, you can make spells. You can make your own spells based on the spells that you already know, and then you can create all crazy kinds of effects. <laughs> Absolutely, uh, yeah. you want to heal somebody and paralyze them and drain their magic at the same time. Feel you feel free to. <laughs> true. True. Yeah. Uh, also, so... you want to burn yourself? No problem. <laughs> true that, that's the saddest thing though if you want to like level up uh destruction effectively you actually need to make a spell that you're gonna cast all the time which for me was the spell that boosts my speed so i can actually run at a reasonable yeah. speed around the around um citadel yeah i will say so like, i made yeah uh the yeah, way so you... i made a spell that like debuffs me which mm -hmm. overrides as a destruction spell, but still boosts my speed. Yeah, so I sense. level up my destruction. So in, in Skyrim, it's a lot more logical and how you can increase uh, your skills uh, by using them mm -hmm. properly. Whereas in uh, Oblivion, it's a bit more wacky, where merely using a spell, any kind of spell, will automatically increase uh, the skill. So if I get a spell that costs me virtually nothing... Uh, like, you know, it cost me three Magicka points, uh, and I could repeatedly cast that, I will increase my uh, skill of that specific uh, uh, well, the school it belongs to, the magic school it yeah. belongs to. In, in Skyrim, they did the thing that when you're in combat it levels up. Yeah. But when you're outside of combat it doesn't. Yeah, and also uh, the more, you know, uh, "Quote unquote expensive spells that you know cost a lot of uh, magicka will actually give you yeah. more, um, more level, more, 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 more experience, experience points in that yeah, particular yeah. skill. Whereas the more the more magicka it drains and the more targets it hits. Yeah, exactly. So and that's not uh, much of a, a thing in, uh, in Oblivion. It's just you can sp spam the lowest spell and become a master at. <laughs> yeah, exactly." Spiffy. And also uh, in uh, in Skyrim, you uh, you choose perks basically. In this uh, in Oblivion, uh, at uh, reaching a certain level, uh, which is every twenty five levels basically, uh, every twenty five levels you gain a sort of fe a feature or a, a, like a perk, as it were, uh, which you have no choice over. Uh, but that helps with. Um, that specific school. For instance, when you have, or that specific skill, when you have uh, weapons, uh, like uh, take it for instance this axe at 25. Uh, if you then make a side uh, sideways power attack, it'll uh, knock things out of their hand. I think. Uh, I don't know them from the top of my head. I know like at level 100, if you do a backstab power uh, whilst walking backwards, a power attack, you will uh, stun the opponent. Which is pretty useful, uh, or have a chance to stun them at least. And as you can see, I also picked up some uh, uh, well, well keyed uh, stones. I've got the name. But uh, if you well use, yeah, well, yeah, if you use one of those, you will regenerate all your magicka in one go, which is useful, obviously. 
Did you talk about the quest lines already? No, not so much. Um, yeah, the quest lines in uh, Oblivion, I actually counted them at some point. Uh, they are longer. <laughs> they are very much longer. Let me see. I think I actually did have a yeah, checklist. There we go. So, um, for instance, the uh, Fighter's Guild, the quest line in um, uh, Oblivion is 19 quests long. The Companions a quest line, which is the equivalent, uh, is only six quests long, <laughs> not counting the the two radiant quests that you need to, do, or, or well, four radiant quests you need to do in between. But it's still like nothing. Uh, the the main quest line, however, is the same length, but like all these like these side quests, yeah, these side quest lines, they are way longer in uh, Oblivion. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what you want to say about that more. I think uh, you wanted to talk about like the, the succession of the uh, quest lines, like do this quest line first. And oh right, yeah. Laugh. There's okay. So um, the Knights of Nine uh, quest line will uh, you can only do as long as you're infamy. So you have that's also something we didn't really discuss. Is that in Oblivion you have uh, fame and infamy where uh, fame you gain for doing good things, infamy you gain for doing bad things. And um, uh, during the Knights of the Nine questline, you need to have an infamy of zero, which you are able to attain uh, after doing the pilgrimage. But the moment you get one point uh, in infamy, uh, you automatically um, are no longer able to use the uh, Crusaders set, which is the main set that you have to constantly use. Um, uh, or at least, uh, well, you basically need to be able to use it at least. And um, uh, yeah, that's why it's probably a good idea to either do all of the Thieves Guild and Dark Brotherhood quests, which are all you know evil, as it were. Uh, do them all first, and then uh, do uh, the Knights of the Nine. Or do the uh, Knights of the Nine first, and then all of the negative ones. So yeah, that's the main thing I want to say. Doing quest lines in order. <laughs> you could also argue about how things are leveled and whatnot, but that's applicable in all games. <laughs> Maybe we could talk about that in some other video. And here I show well, you, you the, the level, the leveled items. I, I think we talked about that in a, every single video, at least like mentioning it because it's such a stupid concept. <laughs> Yeah. Everybody hates it. Um, yeah, no, like we, we quickly discussed that uh, it would be better if items leveled with you as you own them. Yeah. yeah. And here is the and end. Because part. it's so hard to check one value and then uh, subtract from inventory, add to inventory. Yeah, no, exactly. It's a bit uh, crazy. So, uh, that's the end of the. Next up, Morrowind. Morrowind, yes. Uh, uh, which none of us actually played to a great detail, but uh, yesterday we both uh, plunged into it and tried to. Oh well, we yeah. well, we tried over the past it out. Week. I, I yeah. played. <laughs> you played. How many hours did you spend in it? Uh, a lot of hours. <laughs> really? I I played just for free, but oh no, I I've done already for... like six or seven hours. <laughs> oh, that's nice. All right, I, just, I I have just three hours, but still, like it, it caught me. It's a really good game. Like True. the True. the freedom there and the attention to detail is far better than any yeah. other Elder Scrolls game I played. Let's uh, get to that. Uh, but first, let me uh, play the intro. Because it's a very nice intro. Mute your mics, ladies and gentlemen. To the east, to Morrowind. Fear not, for I am watchful. You have been chosen. Wake up. We're here. Why are you? 
you shaking? Are you okay? Wake up. Yeah, sorry. I misclicked there. Alright, welcome back. <laughs> that was Azura. That was Azura's the, voice, yes. Yep. The Lady of Dusk and Dawn. Mm -hmm. Who plays a very important role in the main quest line of Morrowind. But uh, this is your recording, uh, Tom, so take it away. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, I may have inspired myself by the very man in front of me. <laughs> by naming naming my character Jupe after the Jupe in front of me. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, you, as you can see, you start off in a boat. Again, you're a prisoner, a nameless nobody, but you are, you have been sent to Morrowind by Emperor, uh, Emperor Uriel the Sept, uh, Uriel Septim the Seventh. Uh, nobody knows why, but you are here, uh, for all the way from Imperial Prison to a small city called Seidanin. Uh, as you arrive, uh, you are being inter uh, well, not not interrogated, but uh, your basic info is being gathered, such as uh, your name, again your race, uh, by this uh, fellow um, imperial guard man dude, uh, and as you venture uh, in, you uh, get to choose your class, your birth sign, and stuff like that. Uh, the Races of Morrowind, uh, again, they get skill bonuses and it ranges from 5 all the way to 15 in, in, some, uh, in some instances. Uh, the uh, racial differences and the bonuses are even more drastic than in Oblivion. Like in Skyrim, you, you only had bonuses. In Oblivion, you had some disadvantages. In Morrowind, you have disadvantages. <laughs> Just like straight up. <laughs> yeah, you have a lot of disadvantages, especially with Khajiit and Argonians uh, that are. Khajiit, Argonians, uh, high elves. Yeah, no, no, I mean, what I specifically want to mention about the Argonians and the Khajiit is that they cannot wear helmets or boots in mm -hmm, Morrowind mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because they are both the, the stock and the breed, basically, of Argonians and uh, uh, they Khajiit. They can wear special boots, right? No, no. Uh, do not they are not, they are not like special Argonian. Nope. Oh. None. No boots, no helmets. That was a bit that's... too uh, too much, and that's why they removed it in the future games. But yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, as for as per usual, you uh, that you have your specialization, your favorite attributes, your major skills, minor skills. It functions uh, very similarly to Oblivion, but it's it's way more simple i would say i mean i mean i personally don't think it's much more simple because so in in oblivion you had uh, just ma major skills whereas here you also have minor skills and in order to level up in morrowind you need to get uh, 10 points in either major and uh, uh, your major skills or minor skills it doesn't matter but basically uh, the only difference between major and minor skills is that major gets like plus 10 and minor gets plus 5 in the beginning but yeah. you now suddenly have to deal with 10 skills that you can't level up in the beginning. Or unless you want to I, level, uh, at least. Yeah, that, that's why oh, when you have the preset classes, there's always, always one that, like, sticks out. Like, yeah. uh, the, for example, the monk has, like, block, but monk is hand-to-hand. -hand, so, it's like, yeah. Eh? So yeah, what you need to keep in mind is that like thing, certain uh, a lot of things work differently in Morrowind. For instance, block uh, is something that first of all goes automatically, and it only activates when you have a shield in your hand. Uh, yeah, and if you have it equipped, and you do not have a two-handed weapon, but when you uh, stow the two-handed weapon, your shield goes up, but it's stowed and. Yeah, it's complicated. Yeah, but, it's very uh, complicated. Also, uh, if you notice the birth signs, the birth signs are the major thing that when I saw them, I was like, I really don't want to pick any of these. All of them have a detriment to to themselves. Mm -hmm. Well, except and, for like, the ones that not just a give a plain boost. <laughs> but... Yeah, but those boosts are so small. And I was like, I really don't want to pick pick any of them like why would i <laughs> and 
it enc these birth signs encu encourage a, a play style from the beginning. Yeah, so you could Which say that doesn't resonate with me too too much. You could say honestly. that uh, Morrowind is more like um, uh, D and D, where you basically have yeah, a certain yeah, class absolutely. and you're stuck. You're stuck with that class. You can't really deviate all that much from it, and that's even more mm -hmm. so uh, considering that uh, in order to upgrade uh, your skills in uh, various things, you need to use them uh, effectively. But to use them effectively, uh, you need a certain level of skill level, especially because you in Morrowind you can fail to use uh, spells and you can fail to hit a target very mm -hmm. easily uh when you have low level. <laughs> also, lockpicking is super strange because you have to equip the lockpick as a weapon <laughs> and then use it on the container. It took me a while to figure this out. Yeah, yeah, it's not uh, it's not all very intuitive, and that is something that we also uh, would like to clarify is that Skyrim has been really made uh, for everyone to play, uh, and yeah. it's very easy to you know get the hang of. But um, Morrowind but is more older. Like the further back you go, the more difficult it bec the learning curve is much much bigger. Yeah, like the major thing that actually I noticed is that. In order for you to play Skyrim, you don't need to speak English. You can just nope. play it. If yeah. you want to, you are not able to play Morrowind if you can't read the text. Oh no, yeah, definitely. Yeah, no, that's something I also want to uh, indicate. Yeah, you'll see it in a bit, but when you go to a journal, everything is written out as if it's an actual person writing down notes, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's not, you know, as you know, it's definitely not a quick game, but this concept of clicking certain topics in uh, dialogue, I absolutely love it. It's, yeah, like it's wonderful. The, the, the text, the dialogue thing, like where the topics, that's amazing actually, and it gives you a lot of insight. And if when you open your journal, and in your journal you have all these topics, yeah, and when you select the topic. It gives you a list of all the types of people that talk to you about this. So if you select the Empire, you have what an Argonian slave told you about the Empire. You have what a Imperial Captain uh, told you about the Empire. You have what uh, a Store Clerk told you about the Empire. So you get a very broad, like... So, yeah, uh, journal basically of insight yeah, into exactly. the world. Uh, so you could say that Morrowind has much, much more lore, uh, and that is amazing. Um, and yeah, no, it's like, it's, I, it's, I, it's, I, it's, I was it's always like, oh, Morrowind uh, elitists are so stupid and stuff like that. But I played it for three hours, and I can already see the appeal. Yes, there are definitely some. Uh, you know, the like we said before, the learning curve is tremendous, and if you're not used to uh, Elder Scrolls games or mm -hmm. le basically playing old games, then uh, it is quite hard to get used to. I mean, you will even see in your playthrough that you still have some issue getting used to. For instance, uh, the menu that you pop up uh, is done with the right click of a mouse, unless you change oh, the settings, yeah, and then oh, with Normally you play uh, I, press escape or, or F1 or something and he just right click the mouse and it's very strange. <laughs> yeah, that, that's like the worst thing. You can see me often pull out the... Uh, uh, to escape, to, to close all the menus I'm used from all the games, just press escape. It closes all the menus. So yes. I do this all the time and um, it always bring up the stupid options, resume, save, load, yeah. exit game. And I have to, like, then, oh, I have to press escape again and then right click. Yeah. And I, like, I have to, like, speak to myself, like, audibly. I have to do this and that to close the menu. Like, <laughs> ah! <coughs> yeah, no, it's, uh, it's not, it's not, like we said, it's, uh, it's an old game and therefore things are a bit, things are not standardized. Uh, yeah. Where... Uh, they just thought, oh, this this works best, and then like they don't care about what other games do. <laughs> but then they standardized it in later games. Like the menus, like 
are, in my opinion, very nice. Yes. Like uh, that you uh, all have it in one place. Yes, it actually uh, like in a way it's uh, this reminds me of in Daggerfall where you go into the menu and like a shit ton of things are being thrown at you that are not necessarily immediately uh, understandable and that's why it can feel a bit overwhelming. But once you take your time and like look at all the things you can see in screen, it it just makes so much sense. And yeah, it, it, makes, it all makes sense. It all blends to the, uh, together. Yeah. The only thing that I have to like uh, scold <laughs> is that I would really like uh, if I could like yes. uh, what's it called. I'm not sure what you're referring to, so I don't know. Sort. Sort oh, by sort. rarity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, uh, the inventory. Sort by like ah, damage yeah. type. Things uh, are not... Sort by yeah. yeah. You're basically like thrown, thrown... All the information is thrown at you at the same time. Yeah. Uh, I would really like to sort the inventory. That, that, that's that's, the, that's yeah. the only thing. Uh, you can't do that. <laughs> also, when I'm picking up gold from... Uh, from uh, <laughs> from a, a container. container i always have to select all of it like slide the slider i just want to pick up all the gold why would i only want to pick up a single gold piece yeah it's like it's a lot of things out of convenience that are not present yeah, like the the concept of morrowind is absolutely amazing if morrowind would have been made today like with the uh, with the charm it has but with the convenience that we know we can add to uh, present-day <laughs> video games, it would be an absolute banger. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And, uh, yeah, no, like you said. It's <laughs> also fucking faster moving, because this shit kills me. Yeah, no, that's true. In in, um, in Morrowind, uh, your movement speed is so slow. Like, And also, if you look down in the oh, corner, slow. you can see that the stamina is actually, like, walking... Just normal walking will not drain stamina, but walking at a, like a, a faster pace, as is called and running, it, will like constantly consume your fatigue. Thing. Just like yeah, that's not a light joke. Yeah, no, there is no uh, there's no uh, sprinting option. But I mean, I think this is because uh, this game was more. Uh, it's extremely small. The map no, is. It, Small. Well, not that. No, the, the, map is pretty, the map is pretty nice. I'd say it's more of a. Um, oh, I, I'm not it's saying a it's, realistic. It's not nice. Yeah, it's it's more but, realistic. And I mean, think about it. Would you be able to run as at the distances that the characters are running in real life? Would you be able to run that distance? It's not I mean, a lot I of people can. Sprint, I can sprint up really fast. Yeah, but can you walk the distances that you do with armor on? <laughs> Like of of course, like if you're wearing heavy armor, but like light armor is basically like if you have a fucking your skiing outfit, yeah, is comparable to that. And I can sprint pretty much in that, like with a single weapon, like the, the weapon, uh, a, a great sword weighs at most three kilos. Yeah, in real life, yeah, in the games they give them crazy amounts of weight, but yeah, yeah, that, that's always. Like, I don't, I never know know what that uh, unit of measurement is because it's not pounds no except especially when you compare it then what a one-handed sword way that's that's a very much a game mechanic uh where they try to nerf it so like oh we have these powerful weapons well then we got to make them uh, heavier so that's the that's the yeah. counter thing that, and that always like absolutely uh riled my head <laughs> when, they, when there was a sword in the game and like Weight fifteen, like and uh, I know for a fact that the fucking Zweihander, real life Zweihander, weighs two and a half kilos. Yeah, and okay. the thing is, where do you take it? <laughs> uh, the reason, the the main reason is very simple. It's uh, they need to nerf it. Otherwise, everyone would use the same thing, which is exactly yeah. what happened in happens in real life. That's why. You, nowadays in warfare, you see everyone using ranged weapons. <laughs> yeah, just look at the, uh, in the, the in the recording. Iron short sword, weight twenty. Yeah. How? Uh, what is that? <laughs> also, uh, this this is actually quite funny. This character, uh, which they purposefully put here in the beginning, uh, and yeah, he has a scroll of 
which basically fortifies your acrobatics by one thousand. Uh, and yeah, flight. Yeah, it's uh, it's like uh, you know uh, an alternate version to flight. But as you can see from the one who created it, it is not a hundred percent effective. And uh, Tom is so nice to demonstrate uh, why that is. So. Oh yeah, uh, the first I time it tried. fails, but it yeah. took me a while. Yeah. It took me a while to actually figure it out because I casted it, and, and then, then I then I start meshing spacebar. Yeah, no, wrong button. <laughs> and I was like, oh wait, I'm not jumping. Oh yeah, spacebar in this game actually is the Activate. interact yeah. button, <laughs> and jump is E. It's switched. Yeah, it's no so like in I, Oblivion it was also like this though. So. But then you figure I, it out. I, so. I, I changed it, yeah. Yeah, you I, changed so it. That's I, why. I jumped way too late, so I recast it. Here we go. Uh, yeah. It, it, the it, the, the it, sp scroll name is, I is Icarian Flight. Yeah. Icarus. The Look one at that who shit. flew too close to the, sky, uh, to to the, the sun. sun. Yeah. Yeah, burned his walk, wax wings. And f yeah, as you can see, I, you... Uh, In the bottom right, you can see that you're really going whatever, fast. And you jump real fast, but... It dissipates really fast, so then you're just flying through the air at a Mach 10 speed. No, like and the I, thing is, I fell in water. I I thought I was going to survive. Yeah, no, you're too close to the the thing. But yeah, it's, if it's... I was a, a, a half a meter uh, far further, I would have survived that. Yeah, <laughs> it's also um, yeah, it's 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 a jump spell, not a flight spell. Even though they call it Icarus flight, it's just a jump spell. And jump spell does not in, uh, take no, this, landing. This is actually funny. Look at the recording. I, I yeah. look where where is Batmora and yeah. I try to jump to Batmora. Technically, there is water there. Uh, so you might have survived if you had uh, aimed it correctly. But that's but I, impossible. I, I had no idea wh where I should like aim and from where. Uh, but I ended up in Batmora. Actually. Yeah, no, that's true. You did end, end it there. And if it wasn't for the... Uh, I feel like speedrunners might be able to actually <laughs> make use of it. Yeah, they, do. they actually, the, the, what they do is they jump and they interact with a door whilst ah, they're falling. Perfect. That's the way to do it. So yeah. Uh... But speaking of like, once you get out of the office in Morrowind, you are basically thrown into the world and you have no real directions apart from the main quests, which um, wants you to uh, wants to take you to Batmora to talk to uh, some uh, imperial officer, and yeah. but you on your way to the uh, imperial office in Saidanin, you stumble upon a battle, and in that battle is a ring, a magical ring, and mm -hmm. you immediately af after you get out, you uh, notice a man named uh, what's his name? Something with uh, there Fargoff. And yeah. uh, he is missing a ring, so you can give it to him. And he becomes your friend, and he tells his good friend, uh, the stone, uh, the, uh, the store owner, uh, and then the store, store owner also likes you. And above the store owner, there is a little bar, and in the bar is Nordman. And if you talk to the Nordman, he tells you that Fargoff is a little bitch. And that... <laughs> Yeah, that, and the North problem has a gambling problem, and Fargoff has his money, and yada, yada, yada. He yeah. knows that Fargoff is hiding money somewhere, and he wants you to uh, to get it for him. Mm -hmm. And if you talk to Fargoff, he, he, he tells you that he has no such hiding place. So uh, naturally, you don't believe him. You climb up to the lighthouse that is in uh, Seydanin, and you wait until dusk. Well, and to be more exactly, you... 10 p.m. <laughs> 10 p.m., yeah. And uh, as you wait, you can see Fargoff sneaking around the little town. And he's sneaking around. I, I didn't know that it was 10 p.m., so I just went there in uh, uh, when dusk came. So I was, like, in the r r like real-life hour, was waiting, watching the dude uh, drawing circles while while fucking sneaking around until he finally decided to step into the puddle and I was like hey this is strange so I went to investigate and lo and behold uh, in the middle of the puddle there was a hollowed out uh, tree stump and in that 
was his stash full of money and the magical ring uh, I returned to him previously. So I took that uh, and uh, went back to the north and he gave me some gold for it. And uh, when you go then talk to Fargoff again and ask him about his hiding place, he says that he he didn't have uh, one uh, back then and he certainly doesn't have one now. <laughs> This is a, a nice uh, indicator of what spell uh, quests in Morrowind are like, because they are uh, a lot more complicated and you get a lot less help uh, compared to yeah. other games. You uh, don't have a, there is no compass or a quest marker in Morrowind. You have to go uh, by the journal. You have to yes. read and like deduct. You, you're a fucking Sherlock Holmes yes. in Morrowind. You have to talk with people who will give you hints uh, yeah. and then hope that you can figure it out. Also, and that, uh, another small yep. thing that I want to mention is that um, when you are looting a corpse of something, there is a dispose of corpse button, which will, yep. first of all, remove the corpse, uh, which, you know, less clutter, I guess, on the screen, but also uh, it will actually automatically take all items. Oh, you would take all items? Yes. I thought it did. No, them. no, no, it actually... You do take all and automatically. Ah, that's amazing! I didn't know that. There you go. <laughs> and here is another quest uh, of the taxman. Yeah, the taxman. The death of the taxman is just on the screen. You find a uh, dead body of Pre uh, Prosecus Viterius. What a name! Uh, <laughs> in the woods, surrounded by scribes with these little shrimp-like uh, beasties, <laughs> and. Uh, when you report this to the guards, they tell you that you need to uh, find his murderer. And they don't know who it is, so you need to, again, uh, talk to the town, ask around, stuff like that, blah, blah, blah. And the thing is, uh, again, you ask around the town, and they only tell you that uh, he was a friend with the uh lighthouse or owner he, he, uh, her name is like what's, it, what's her name <laughs> good luck pronouncing that that's a nice yeah. side note uh the names in uh morrowind are all very much uh more fantasy like fantasy like and they... therefore impronounceable for uh you know standard english people <laughs> especially if english is your second language uh <laughs> I'm not even tr gonna try, uh, try to pronounce that. Um, <laughs> so anyway, um, you go on this little uh, investigation adventure, yes. uh, and uh, eventually you find this Dunmer uh, who uh, con actually like tells you he killed him, and he's proud of it because uh, he was a he was a tax man. He he basically. Uh, Took taxes from everyone in the town, and he was always flashing his money, uh, flashing his money, uh, all the uh, nice things he b he bought, and people were like pissed at him. Everybody, nobody, nobody liked him, and so this Dunmer like disposed of him, and nobody really bats an eye. Uh, but when you tell the Dunmer that you're gonna uh, report him to the Imperials, he straight up attacks you. Yeah. yeah. So so you kill him. And on him you can find uh, a ring of the uh, guy who... The w yeah, the wife, Pro basically. Prosecco Viterius or whatever his name was. Uh, the dead dead. Then you can, yeah, and then you can return the ring to his girlfriend in the fire in, in the in the lighthouse and uh, you get some health potions for that. Sure. Or you can sell it. Yes, or you can even enchant it because uh, it's actually exquisite quality. So that's uh, best enchantment. Uh, another nice feature that I want to mention uh, in Morrowind is that um, when you do like when you, when you do quests like you're supposed to, you will actually uh, have to uh, go through this whole investigation and figure things out, and then finally you have the answer. But a lot of quests, maybe not all of them, but a lot of quests, um, if you know how the quest is going to uh, go, previous playthroughs or something. A lot of them you can actually skip right to the ending that you want to go to, um, yep. and which happened to, uh, with me and the uh, death taxman. I just 
I was just investigating and I went into all of the houses mm-hmm. in uh, Saidanane and I uh, entered the house of the Dunmer who killed him and he just straight up confessed to me. Yeah, exactly. And it's uh, that is actually in a way more realistic when it comes to certain quests. For instance, there's also a quest, uh, I think it's a Thieves Guild quest, where you have to you have to find the key and then go into um, uh, a bank and like basically basically rob the bank. But you can actually find that key even without the quest, and you can rob the bank, no problem, uh, beforehand. And you can still get the quest later. It's not going to cause any trouble. So, but it's cool that like things that make sense that they would be possible beforehand, and you don't have to wait for something to be spawned in or something. Um, like you have really, you really have that with Skyrim. Um, yeah, absolutely. And here you I... can actually do things. You can basically meta game in a way, which is of course not the best thing. But or you can just lock the fuck out. Yeah, you can. Yeah, exactly. You can get very lucky and like, hey, what is this? Yeah. So like in in the in the uh, in the recording, you can just see I just entered the uh, bar that I was supposed to go in. It took me a solid five minutes to find the bar in the town because there are no quest markers. Yeah, no, true. Have, but like, if you if you ask someone, every, yeah, <laughs> yeah, they tell you it's south, but when you go south, there's like eleven buildings yeah. there, and then they Not all true. look the same. None of them has like a beacon. <laughs> no, no, very true. You really have to um, ask different people who will give you different kind of um, uh, instructions. Their uh, take on, yeah, they they all give you their take on the matter. Yeah, exactly, and that will eventually lead you to uh, figuring out where yeah. you need to be. And for instance, this guy that you're going to talk to about where exactly he lives, he gives a very, very exp- specific instructions. On where to find yeah, the guy which you're looking for. Yeah, he, he, I mean, look he at that. tells you like go left, uh, go right, stuff yeah, like exactly. that. Yeah, exactly. Down like, the end of the, the street. Thing is, this is not tedious. This is actually like fun. Yeah, no, exactly. This is um, this is more like an RPG. Mm-hmm. And As in you a good said, way. Like, this is way more like the uh, dungeon, Dungeons and Dragons. Yes. Of the RPG games. It's way more uh, do, make your own adventure. It's not blindly follow the quest marker until something happens. Yes, but like we said, also uh, the only like downside is that you're kind of like the class you choose, and it's it's hard yeah, to yeah. get out of that. It's possible. Don't get us wrong. It's possible, but it's not easy. Like the the thing when you start Morrowind is that you need to set up the slider of the difficulty all the way to the left. <laughs> for yeah, for like low as you as you level up, you uh, every few levels just pump it uh, uh, for, uh, by a magnitude of ten to the right. <laughs> you could do that, yeah. So yeah, uh, we are nearing the end of your recording and the end of our podcast today. <laughs> What's funny? Oh right, <laughs> yeah, the, uh, yeah, in the, in the chat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I saw. <laughs> um, yeah. So thank you everyone uh, for watching today's stream. Um, and if you're not watching the stream and watching it on YouTube, thank you all as much. Uh, thank you Are as you well for watching. Podcast? Hopefully, oh, it's been useful. Um, let me give the ending line because I had a beautiful ending line. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> Thank you very much again for watching. If you still have questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section of the YouTube video. Um, uh, you could ask them in chat if you were here, but <laughs> that's not possible. Uh, or look in the, the links uh, that we will also put in the description of this video. Yeah. And with that, I hope we're gonna. Add... Our little thingy inspired you to begin your own journey into the yeah. Elder Scrolls games. Exactly. So, uh, once again, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye. See you later. Bye.